and welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Serena and in today's video we are going to be sewing up some Christmas pajamas I am only doing two pajamas in this video because I am running a little behind schedule this video should have been up last week but the bad weather had me slowing very slowly and just I was my mood was very much matching the weather but um, I'm finally almost done or with all of my Christmas sewing this week I'm going to be working on my Christmas day dress so hopefully I can push through the gloomy weather and get that done in time but anyway let's get into my Christmas pajamas today I'll be making my pajamas and my son pajamas so if you're interested in seeing that process go ahead and watch along to the rest of this video don't forget to like and subscribe as well as follow me on Instagram if you want to see what I'm up to in real time. And if you'd like to support this channel further, you can always leave me a virtual tip on Ko-fi. The link will be in the description below. I also want to thank you guys so much for getting over 15k new subscribers. I am so thankful and so happy that you've all been here for my favorite time of year and all of my holiday and Christmas sewing and crafts. So thank you so much. And now let's finally get into the video. For today's video, we'll be using McCall's 6242 in the size 14 bust 32 and this pattern was released in the 1960s it is 1962 to be exact it says it right down there and here is the back it doesn't have a lot of pattern pieces and it's extremely simple so i'm going to be doing both um, pieces the nightgown and the duster only modifications I'll be making is I'm going to be making Duster B with the collar of Duster A and I'm making Duster A without the tie so essentially Duster B without the bias tape. For my son's pattern I'll be using Simplicity 4130. This pattern's from 1952 I believe or early 1950s. It comes with two versions, one with feet, one without, and then long sleeve and a short sleeve. We'll be doing the long sleeve version today with the feet. One feature I really like about this pajama is that the ties bring down a flap in the back so that way your toddler can use the bathroom without completely getting undressed. This is the second time I'm making this pattern. The first time I made it for my daughter's Christmas outfit or Christmas pajamas the year the baby was born. So it's really neat to see him wear the same pattern that she did. Now I will not be sewing this one on camera, but I wanted to share the pattern that I used for my daughter's outfit. This year she's probably going to wear some pajamas that my mom bought her and I didn't want her to have to choose between mine and the one that she already got because she really loves that. So I decided to go with a house coat for her. We went with the longest version. Um, this one only has a button at the neck and then it ties at the waist. We decided to go with view two to have buttons go all the way down and no ties so it's just easier for her to wear and less pieces to keep up with and then of course she has the pockets as well because toddlers love pockets for the fabric we are using 100 percent cotton flannel which we pretty much use this type of fabric every single year but this year's theme we're doing the nutcracker we fell in love with this fabric because it's so inclusive and i was so happy to see black fairies and ballerinas this is one of my all-time favorite ballets and I can't wait till the kids are old enough to sit through an entire ballet so I thought it was really cute to see some inclusive Christmas fabric this year and I had to get my hands on some. Usually I try and stay within like the winter category so we can wear our pajamas all winter long and not just for Christmas Day but I kind of broke that tradition and went for full-on Christmas when I saw this fabric. So matching family pajamas is a tradition for my family. It started when my mom would allow us to open one Christmas gift on Christmas Eve and it was always pajamas and we knew that too but we were excited to open a new present anyway. So because I can sew I decided to do the exact same tradition but this time I would make them all and we'd wear matching fabric and it's really wild to see how much the fabric requirements go up every single year like we're down to like we buy I think 16 yards every year like two bolts of eight yards every year. I'm currently basting sew-in interfacing to the button placket facing and now I'm attaching that to the front of the pajama and once this is sewn on on both sides I am going to turn it to the inside and press it. After that I am 
top stitching that facing in place and I'm doing this by feeling I did not mark this I feel like at a certain point you kind of get used to knowing like it's hard to explain but I can feel the edge where I folded it over underneath so I'm really using my fingers as a guide and not doing it as blindly as it looks then I attach the two front pieces at the crotch and then I sew a little triangle where the button placket overlaps Now I'm sewing a narrow hem onto the bottom of the upper bodice back and this is going only halfway down your child's back because the bottom of course does open. So once I do that I sew the shoulder seams on the front and the back pieces. Usually I do a French seam to hide the raw edges but this pattern gave me a facing so I'm attaching that now and then later on I'm going to top stitch that facing in place. Now I am doing the soft pleat on the back of the pajama bottoms. After this I'm going to sew down the center seam of the pajama pant, the back of the pajama pant, wrong sides together and then right sides together because I'm using French seams for this. After that it is time to sew the waistband on and so I'm doing that really quickly. This pajama is a really quick sew and it could be because I've already done it before but I do remember it being really easy to sew before too. I would recommend that you use pinking shears for close finishing these seams. Somehow all of my pinking shears happen to be dull right now and a mis it's probably not a mystery like they're all like 70 plus years old but this year I guess they all decided to kick the bucket together. So the next time that I go shopping I need to remember to pick up a fresh pair. I wonder if the ones that I do have can be professionally sharpened. It would be really nice to continue to use my pinking shears because literally up until a couple months ago, they were all working just fine. So I don't know if it's like some kind of moisture in the air or something that affected the cut or the blade on them, but I definitely need a new pair. So if you're in a hurry to make Christmas pajamas and you are so brave to try and do them right after seeing this video, you can skip a lot of the longer finishing parts and use a peaking shears instead. Now this is a little trick to make the bottom non-slip. I use some puffy paint and I like to customize by putting the year that I made the pajamas and then I do go in and put their names or their initials, which I won't be sharing here. And then I add little polka dots everywhere so that way they have grip and that way you don't have to buy grip fabric. You can buy grip fabric but I found this out one year when I could not find any in stock and I had to use what I had and so I've just been doing it this way ever since. Now it's time to personalize. I wanted to do a cute little monogram on there for my kids. One year I did it, I embroidered it completely by hand and this year I wanted to try using yarn to sew on the monogram so first I traced out the letter with some chalk and then I used yarn to follow the tracing that I made and then I'm just top stitching directly on top and this is a straight stitch and I'm really happy with the way that it turned out I'll definitely be using this technique in the future it was really quick and I like the finished result so now both my kids outfits are complete I always start with theirs just in case I don't have time to finish mine they still get their Christmas pajamas I am showing you how the back flap works and that comes all the way out so I was just showing you really quickly on the hanger and then we have my daughter's robe on the bigger dress form she kind of just graduated to that dress form and it's so sad two down one more to go and it is time to start working on mine for this video i am using some remnant lace that i have found at the store and i've been using this for collars for a couple years now i've just been cutting bits and pieces of this so this is like a scrap of a scrap of a scrap and i am starting with the yoke for the dress the nightgown and i will be interlining this with a white cotton so that way it's no longer see-through and then while I have the lace out, I'm going to also cut a matching collar for the duster. Now that the lace pieces are cut out, I am cutting out the interlining of the collar as well as the facing for the collar out of this white cotton scrap. If you are new here, interlining is just taking two pieces of fabric and making them one. 
so that way you can treat them as one piece of fabric so you can see here I am lining up the lace on top of the cotton and then I'm going to pin it together and take it over to my sewing machine and baste it and make this collar piece one. This pattern is a little large for me so I did make some ad initial adjustments to the yoke portion of the nightgown. I didn't make any adjustments to the collar of the duster. Since the yoke of the nightgown was cut on the fold, I took off a half inch on the front and the back. I used my dress form as a guide to decide how much I wanted to reduce it. Now I'm working with the yoke pieces. They are already interlined, so I am sewing them right side together to sew those shoulder seams. And I'm using a 5 8 seam allowance for this. Because I have a narrow chest, these really wide necklines usually are too wide for me even when the pattern is in my size. Now it's time to cut the main dress portion of the nightie and this is cut on the fold. Both the front and the back is cut on the fold and I also had to make some adjustments to this pattern but I forgot all about it because in my head since I had already made the adjustments for the yoke. I completely forgot about adjusting the armhole for the underarms so whenever I was nearly done with this project or at least the nightgown version of this project I tried it on and the armholes were gaping and I couldn't figure out why it was at first I did realize that I didn't pay attention to the instructions and so the underarm bias tape with 5 8 seam allowance when it should have been a quarter and that was completely on me the night that I was working on this project, I had actually took a nap or fell asleep really early that night. And then when I woke up at 11 o'clock, I came down to sew. So I was still a little groggy and I just skimmed over the pattern. And keep in mind that with all patterns, but especially vintage patterns, sometimes they change up the seam allowance for different parts of the pattern. So you always have to read and make sure that you do it correctly. However, that's not necessarily also the reason why the hole was too big. It was too big because obviously the pattern was too big. It was like two sizes too big for me. So I had to make some adjustments after the fact and reduce the um, armholes. And it was really easy since it's pretty much a sack of a dress. So it's nothing really tailored and I was able to fix that up really quickly. Now it's time to close up the side seams with French seams starting with the wrong sides together and then I follow that up with sewing the right sides together. For the last two years in a row I've been making the same pajama pattern and this year I almost did it a third time. But I decided to step out of my comfort zone and do something different. It's not necessarily a comfort zone so much as I really do like the pajama pattern that I've been making for myself. And they're very comfortable and good for wearing all day long. So I wasn't sure that I wanted to give that comfort up for a dress that I knew wasn't going to go all the way down to my ankles. But I wanted to try something a little bit different and I knew this would be warm. Now for my foolproof bias tape armhole trick or bias tape trick you're going to want to iron your bias tape into the shape of the opening that you want to cover so that way it lays flat when you sew it under do any of you ever wish that certain vintage materials were still being produced today i have a couple on my list and now that i've had like a true vintage flannel nightgown set true vintage like flannelette would be on the list i've searched for flannelette high and low since buying that nightgown off of eBay. It's so thin, it's almost sheer, but it definitely is flannel. It has a nice drape to it and it's not as bulky as modern flannel, bulky and stiff. Now I do love modern flannel and I feel like it'd be perfect for certain vintage dresses, especially the duster on this one because it holds its shape so beautifully. But I do believe that a uh, lighter material for the nightgown would have been nicer. Of course, because it's very cold outside, I did avoid sheer fabrics because view A was intended for a sheer fabric. It was also lined. Um, of course, I didn't use a lining because this was already thick enough. So I think a vintage flannelette would have actually been exactly what this pattern called for well in fact it did call for it but i just couldn't locate or source it next on my list would be quality wool i mean wool that can make a nice pencil skirt and wool that could make a decent dress i feel like all i can ever find in the sense of wool 
is coding material and even that isn't always exactly what it is that I'm looking for. I also find that whenever I do find any kind of wool it's always plaid and as much as I love plaid it would be nice to have some solids too because it would make um, mixing and matching outfits a lot easier. I did pick up some pre-cut vintage wool fabric that was intended to make a skirt and I plan on doing a video on that because I have some one yard skirt patterns and I have two pre-cuts that are one yard each so I think that'd be a really cool video but I wish that was something that I could buy brand new why can't I go to the store and buy a solid wool that's the perfect weight for a skirt or a dress I need these changes to be happening and this is the last one before this turns into what I wish I could buy video I would love for cotton velvet to be more accessible like come on like Okay, polyester velvet has its purpose and its uses, but why can't we have cotton velvet? Provide it and we will buy it. Oh, and honorable mention, we do need more cotton sateen, but that's it. I'm done. We can get back to the sewing of this dress now. It is time to sew the collar on. This collar should have had some sort of a ruffle or embellishment on it, but I didn't have any embellishments to put on it at the end of the year i do reduce my shopping i hate going in the stores and dealing with crowds i also used to work retail in college and i hated when people would come into the store so i kind of don't like to do that to other people so i avoid it at all costs and then i don't like wasting my time trying to order online around the holidays either it makes the workload a lot on our postal service also the the chances of things getting lost in the mail is a lot greater so i do tend to go without which is good for me because you're saving money around the holidays when you're expected to spend the most so i opted to go without any trim for this because whatever trim i would have put on the collar i would have needed to put on the sleeve as well so that's why technically i'm making view b instead of view a view a would have had all the extra trim on it it is time for the pockets and i'm sewing these with 5 8 seam allowance and i'm sewing between two slashes that you wouldn't be able to see from this view I also want to note that I did extend the depth of this pocket because it's quite shallow. My hand could hardly fit within the seam allowance, so I knew that my cell phone would not. Plus, if you're going to add pockets into something, then why would you why would it be so shallow that your hands can't fit, especially in such a large duster? So, I did this in a very freestyle kind of way. No measurements. I just put my phone down within the seam allowance and then I traced a super or a deeper because it's not as big as it could have been but a deeper um, pocket and then I go around and sew all four of them down once all the pockets are sewn then I do some under stitching to keep the pockets in place whenever I am wearing it this pattern was a little odd in the sense that you had to close the side seams before putting the pockets in and I just did it my way I felt like this way was a lot easier and less work um, whereas they had you putting the pockets in after the duster was pretty much all sewn together And now here I am closing up the side seams since the pockets are done I usually omit pockets, but this feels very nice and sturdy So I have faith that and the fact that I'm going to be at home wearing this I shouldn't have anything too heavy inside of these pockets except for my wedding band occasionally and then my phone from time to time after this and lots of hand sewing later for the hem, it's time for the reveal. And here I am tying up the collar. There will be a hook and eye right here, but I was running out of daylight, so I wanted to get some footage of me wearing this so I didn't have to postpone the video again. Look, I am so happy with it. It's definitely giving 1960s mom waiting at the tree with her cup of coffee. And the inside is giving your Nana. And I love it. I love everything about it. Of course you can add ties to the nightgown, but I prefer to wear it without because it is what it is. It's comfortable, it's warm, and it's cute. That is all for this video. It was a long one. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. Happy holidays and I'll see you in the next one.